What's going on guys, Big VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna to be looking at Jared, the Simpsons Virtual Pinball Party Limited Edition V-Pin Build. That is a mouthful. <laughs> All right guys, so if you haven't followed me already, you should be following me on Instagram at Vic underscore VP. You would have seen how this beautiful machine was built from the ground up. And again, if you take a look at a couple of videos back, I did make my big announcement as far as building arcades and V pinball machines as a main job. So yes, I will be building arcade and V pinball machines as a full-time job. That was my announcement. It's a very big deal. I've been holding it and I, I'm just so excited. So we're going to discuss a lot today about Jared's pin. We're going to be looking at the pinball machine itself. We're going to talk about all the features, all the flashers, why it's named the limited edition version of my V pinball build. We'll be talking about the customer himself and we'll get some gameplay footage. Why not? So first things first is the main thing is the screens, the computer that's running on this. So this is running a 50 inch seven series Samsung 4k play field. We do have a 32 inch frameless view Sonic 1080p back glass. And on this one, we do have a 20 inch, DMD 1080p. So there's three screens on this 50 inch, 32 inch, 20 inch DMD. If you see my personal Simpsons pinball machine that I have in my basement, I am running a 22 inch DMD. Unfortunately for this build, they don't make 22 inch screens kind of compact frameless anymore. So I did have to go with the 20 inch for Jared on this one, which he was okay with. This right now is actually running a pre-built Dell. I never really did it before. I'm gonna be making a whole nother video, but this is running a Dell XPS. This is running an i5 processor with 512 gigabyte SSD uh, drive on it, alongside a GTX 1660 Super. Um, I did upgrade the RAM on this. It originally came with eight gigs. I added 16 gigs, but I also kept the original eight. So 16 gigs plus the eight gigs on it. I believe you're at 24 gigs in total. Yes, you're at 24 gigs of RAM in total. It had four RAM slots and originally stock, it had one eight gig stick. I bought two eight gig sticks. So there's really three eight gig sticks. And there you have it. This is running 24 gigs of RAM. Now keep in mind though, it is a pre-built Dell. So this is all like Dell exclusive parts, I guess you could say. So like the 512 SSD drive that's on this, it's like a, a certain specific Dell name. It's not like a name brand SSD, like a Samsung or a Seagate. It is a proprietary Dell um, SSD. Also the big thing when you do research on these pre-built Dells is that the uh, GTX, the GeForce 1660 Super, it's like supposedly not a real 1660 Super. I don't really know what that means. If you do watch a couple of videos on YouTube, there's a guy that's like talking a lot of bad about this card, but in all honesty, it's playing and it plays the three screens pretty damn good. I'll be honest, it is running 4K. The TV I have is 60 Hertz, but it plays the 4K at 60 Hertz and it is powering all three displays. Again, you do have HDMI is going to the actual Samsung TV. And you have a display port going to the ViewSonic. And then there was like a special kind of, I don't even know the name of the plug, like a DVI um, thing. I did a DVI to HDMI to go to the DMD screen on this. As far as toys on this, this is the biggest thing. Again, this is really when we get into limited edition. Again, toys are referencing like the beacons and the strobes and the solenoids all the stuff that really makes this kind of a real life pinball machine. It gives you the realistic feel. So on this, this is running 10 Simon Siemens contactors on this 24 volt. So it does have a pretty nice thump to it. As far as automotive strobes, we do have the RGB flashers as a red and blue automotive strobe. And my strobe lights are white automotive strobes. In total, it is 17 automotive strobes. They're everywhere. Just underneath, and I'll take you underneath just so you can see it, there's three, six, and four. Underneath the cabinet alone, you do have the LED underglow, and I do have 10 automotive flashers just underneath the main cabinet alone. As far as the back box here, you can't even see it, but there are two strobes here, so one and one, and there's an R and a B flasher. Up top where I do have my topper, which is the Simpsons characters, the Bart and the Homer piggy banks. You do have the two beacons 
and there's also five automotive lights up there too so there's an r g b and two whites that stay permanently on to keep bart and homer illuminated again the toys on this is pretty pretty insane also as far as force feedback this is running 10 solenoids in my last pinball build and in this one i did put 10 simon's contactors 24 volts so these things really thump basically contactors give you a real kind of feel like when your bumpers go off or when the flippers go off, you do actually feel a thump in the cabinet. Alongside these solenoids, I do have four exciters. We do have Dayton audio exciters, so it kind of mimics the ball roll. You could actually feel the ball roll. So there is a lot of toys in this. This is a couple more toys than what I have in my personal V-pin. And this again deemed it the limited edition. Basically again, the only thing that's missing from this is if we wanted to add LED matrix which we personally am not a fan of. It's, a, it's very flashy, but you could do LED matrix and you could do a chime unit, which me personally, I don't like the chime tables. Neither did the customer Jared, so we didn't put a chime unit in this. The other big thing though is that this is running a shaker motor. This does have a 12 volt real stern shaker motor. Couple of tables. Simpsons Pinball Party does have a feature of it. When you do hit the garage door, you will actually feel the table shake. It is a motor that just triggers and shakes. Um, a couple of main tables like Twister, uh, even Tales of the Arabian Night, the shaker motor does shake. So that is a pretty cool feature. When we do gameplay, you might see it go off or I will show you the LED tester because this is using an LED Wiz. I'll show you how you could basically test it and I'll show you what it really sounds like just in test mode. As far as other little details, this is running a 16 channel Saint Smart board connected to an LED Wiz. And as far as analog plunger, this does have a real analog plunger with live nudge. So you could really nudge the table thanks to the KLZ board. That's just how realistic V-Pin gets. You do have solenoids, you got strobes, beacons, flashers, you got the surround sound feedback, you got the plunger, and you do have the live nudge. Again, this is the limited edition V-Pin. As far as audio on this, this is running the Z533 from Logitech pretty loud, I believe it's a 120 watt sound system. We do have two stereo speakers, and as you saw in the little previews, you do see the subwoofer cutout. So there is an actual sub. Unlike my personal build, I actually made a nice four inch diameter, put the sub right in, so this thing really shakes too. What's really cool is that there is actually no volume knob or switches anywhere on the cabinet. I am using a program called Pinval. Basically, holding down the extra ball, the blue lip button, and using your flippers, you'll be able to raise and lower the volume. So it was much cleaner than my personal build, and it was a pretty cool feature. Instead of you going and turning a knob, Pinball makes it easy. So now I'll show you what the table looks like in night mode, or if you turn off the lights, it really kind of stands out. Again, you do see the LED underglow. Depending on what table you play, for example, the Simpsons table, it is yellow LEDs. If you play, for example, Ghostbusters, or if you play Deadpool, it would be red or green. So it's pretty cool that everything works within the software. Even same thing with the LED speakers that you do see here, the LED rings that I created out of an LED strip. You can see all that, it's pretty awesome. Now real quick, we'll go talk about Jared now. So Jared messaged me on Instagram and said, hey Vic, I love your V-pin. I want one, I want one, I want one. So he actually messaged me back and I believe it was June. Um, and at the time I was working another job. So I told him, listen, I'm going to build another V-pin because I do want another V-pin, but I'm going to need some time. So right now, again, we kind of started the process in June. It right now is going to be delivered to him next week in September. So with that though, before he did pay me, well, I didn't really even get a deposit to be honest with you. Um, with this specific build, I told him, listen, just let me know what artwork you want. I'm going to build the cabinet because I'm trying to make a lot of videos on V-pin. And when it comes time, I'll ask you what the artwork is, and then you will be the first one to receive a cabinet so when i first started this cabinet it was all white and again the main thing when it comes to v-pin builds is that it's all wiring and all that you'll see in another video the amount of wiring that goes into v-pin it's pretty insane so big kudos to jared for being very patient uh basically i told jared i said listen i'll strike a deal with you i'm really building this to understand how long it's going to take me personally to build a v-pin cabinet so with that I have a rough estimate on how long it would take to build a cabinet. So again, thanks Jared for your patience. It's coming to you next week, so not to worry. Now when Jared messaged me, you know, he said to me, Hey Vic, I love your Simpsons pinball cabinet duplicated. I want the Simpsons. 
I said, are you sure, man? Maybe I could do something else. Maybe you want to check something else out. Maybe I'll do a different, you know, artwork style because I didn't really want to duplicate my Simpsons pinball party. But if you want my Simpsons pinball party, I'm going to duplicate it. So he said, yeah, they, my kids, I got kids. They like the Simpsons. And sure enough, I built him a Simpsons pinball cabinet. I originally, before he even messaged me, I already had ideas of building another cabinet. I was going to do a South Park themed cabinet. So this originally really was going to be a South Park themed, but when I have a customer and he's willing to pay, I let them pick the artwork, obviously. So this kind of funny backstory, it was supposed to be a different table, but Jared, customer, messaged me. He wanted a Simpsons pinball party, and there you have it. That's how we basically decided on the artwork. The artwork is an exact duplicate of my personal Simpsons pinball party pin. Um, only big difference, honestly, I used a different vinyl artwork guy. I don't know what happened to my other guy, which was custom arcade graphics. I don't know what happened to him. I placed a deposit. I actually paid for vinyl. After like a month, I've gotten nothing, no response. He's usually good within like two weeks. Nothing. Had to file a party card dispute. Basically, now I will always be using Gulf Coast decals. That's who made basically the print for this. Again, I make the artwork. He printed it for me on Glossy, did the back box, everything you see here, an amazing deal. And not to mention, he printed and shipped it within like five days. So, Shout out to Gulf Coast decals on hooking up the artwork. It looks amazing. All right, I'm gonna leave you guys there. We're gonna do a quick round just so you can kind of see how the strobes go off and the beacons go off and all that. So I'm gonna put a coin in. I have the volume low because the wipe is thin, but I'll bump it up a little bit. But you can see automatically when I do put coins in, you can see two of the automotive strobes. I'm gonna press start. You could hear the solenoids. Again, there's 10 solenoids. So that's just two of the flippers. And again, depending on the bumpers that you hit, it will go across. So there's three solenoids in the back, three in the middle, and there's really four right here. Again, using analog plunger. Play a quick round. Again, keeping the volume low, at least you guys could hear the solenoids going off. And you'll be able to hear, you know, like the beacon. That was shaker mode that just went off, you just heard. Now beacons, you can see that's the B channel on RGB. Try to get multi ball. Drained it. I'm gonna bump with the volume. Again, using pin ball. You might be able to hear the ball roll now. goes off here. You hear the sub. Okay, multiple. Drain. I'm gonna bring you closer. So now while you're here, I'll show you real quick the pin ball. Again, I'm gonna hold down the extra ball. And if I use my flipper, you can see it here. Just that 60% alone, it's pretty loud. I'll go to like 70. You could slightly hear the ball roll if I go slightly. Again, you could hear it here. There's an exciter here that does bring that realistic sound to it and the feel. That's shaker motor. I want to show you guys the analog nudge, so it's too dry on the ball. As you can see, I'm able to shake the pinball cabinet and it moves the ball. Again, 4K display. 
साथ है So now again, as far as pinball, which is really cool, as you can see, I'm down to 1%. And from my personal experience, like with my pin, I have the actual physical knob for the volume. This is great. The only big thing is that this is basically global volume, all the volume. So if I'm low at 1% here, my exciters are also low. So you don't really hear the ball roll because the volume is low. I'll put another coin in. So you could hear solenoids going off to release the ball, but right now you don't really hear the ball roll. If I bump up the volume, you could hear it. I hope you heard that. I'm gonna drain the ball. You can probably hear it drop. Listen. That right there is the surround sound force feedback. So again, shaker motor. See, it sounds like the ball actually drops. So now what's different about my machine compared to other machines or other people, other companies. My machine, again, I use RGB flashes, automotive strobes. So again, RGB, there are a couple that are in the back glass, or I should say the DMD where the speakers are. And I do have a couple up above the back glass, but I also have them underneath. So if I play, you can see right there, that's an RGB going off. So most builders do just the LED underglow Whereas for me, especially on the limited edition, I did add RGB flashers underneath the main cabinet. I'll do it one more time. Same thing with the strobes. So there's RGB flashers and there's strobes. That was a strobe, that was a flasher. That was strobes. You can see on my left foot. Oh, I got multiple. <laughs> That's a flasher. I have multiple right now. Okay, you can see RGB flashers. So LED on the glow alongside RGB flashers. Now there's also another cool feature. You can see right now I have the volume low, but you do hear like the same smart board. You do hear little stuff going off. You could also hear like the beacons. There's actual motors inside the beacon. So let's say you're playing at night like I do, like I play at 1 a.m. You don't want to piss off the wife. I've added the night mode switch. It's a physical toggle switch. So if I come right back here and I flip my switch, I just disabled all DOF. Everything related to DOF is disabled. So honestly, the LED underglow, the LED strips also is disabled. You do have a slight hint, but it's not yellow anymore. As you can see, there is still some power going to the LEDs, but everything else, solenoids, nothing. Beacons disabled. And as you can see right now, this is considered night mode. So. You know, again, depending on where you put this table, you know, I don't know if you're gonna have it in a man cave or if you're gonna have it in the living room, but you know, playing at night, 
the DAF, it is pretty loud. What's pretty cool though is disabling the DAF when you just saw me flip the switch, the surround sound feedback still works. So again, it's all related to volume. So that's what's also cool about the pinball setup where you know I could lower the volume and that's honestly why I did it globally. So the ball sound effects isn't that loud. It's basically again, one volume for the entire system. You could hear the, the, the exciters. That's the exciter. That's actual volume, that's actual speaker, that is not solenoid. And again, as you can see, I'm able to enjoy my pinball machine without the flashers. And if you wanted to reactivate it, it's literally a flip of a switch. That's it. Now I'm back. Take the motor. Awesome. So now real quick, I exited the entire program. This is the desktop. No customer really should be going into this, but it's there. I'm showing you this. I'm lo I loaded this up just to show you the shaker motor on this. What's crazy about the shaker motor is that I had to add an actual physical dial to really dial how much power the shaker motor gets. The more power, basically if I left it stock without this dial, the shaker motor, literally the cabinet went like left, like it would shake. I'm gonna do this real quick just so you could hear. This is with the dial, this is basically the max amount of speed or vibration the shaker motor would do. Ready? Insane. <laughs> and then just to show you guys right there, that is the dial for the shaker motor. If I can focus, that is the dial for the shaker motor. There you guys have it. VVP Game Case Arcade Jared Simpson's Virtual Pinball Party Limited Edition.